families, it's Elena, and today I just wanted to take a quick second. Maybe you've never logged on before, and I just wanted to introduce myself to you. I'm Elena Raskowski. I am the Minister of Youth and Families here at Christ Community, and this is our children's ministry video. We post one each week after service, so it goes up at 10 a.m., and it has a Bible story packed with visuals and a recap video that's super funny and hosted by two really awesome hosts at the end. So I hope you stay tuned for this entire video. We're talking about the monthly theme of upside down, which is how God does things opposite sometimes of what we would think. For instance, like bringing, from, bringing Jesus from death to life. <laughs> That's pretty opposite of, of how it goes. And so I hope that you stay tuned for the entire thing. I hope you have fun, maybe have some discussions with your family after the video or even with us here in the comments. But grab a snack, grab your pets, grab your family, and stay tuned. Ooh. Oh. oh, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name's Jacob, but my friends call me Jake. I don't know how all these balloons got here. It must just be a, another hilarious April Fool's Month joke from my friends. <laughs> and it's a good one. But I can't find anything. I mean, it took me forever just to find this camera. Hello? Camera? Where are you? I need to talk about humility. Camera? Camera? Hello? Where are you? I need to talk about humility. So, let's talk about humility. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Now, what's a good way to describe humility? Okay, so let's say I was a world famous balloon maker. I could be all like, I make balloons better than anybody. I deserve the best seat in the house at the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the balloon convention. I deserve the best seat in the house at the balloon convention. Meh. What if I won a contest for best color box puzzle solving? I could be all like, I can cube solve faster than you. I'm smart and you're not. <laughs> or I could be like, hey, if you want to know more about cube solving, I can teach you because I'm smart and also nice. Lamps or electricity. You know everything there is to know about electricity. You're like Alfred Einstein. This lamp works because of power going through the wire into the light bulb and it makes it bright and stuff. And I can control it with a switchy poo. I know everything there is to know about electricity and light and things like that. <laughs> Sorry about that, that was really weird. I don't really know anything about electricity. Anyway, today's story is about these people who thought they knew everything about what God was up to, but they really had a lot more to discover. I've got a lot more to discover too. Like where's my bed and my TV and my floor? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. The sun was still high in the skies. Cleopas and his friend, who we'll call Micah, started their journey to the town of Emmaus. The day was hot and their sandals kicked up dust off the hard packed road. They were exhausted by the difficult events of the past few days. Seven miles, we'll make it by dinner time. You believe it? All that stuff the women said when they came back from the garden. I don't really feel like talking. What if it's true? Have you ever seen a dead man come back to life? Lazarus? You didn't see that, you heard about well, it. Well, lots of people saw it. <sighs> Don't look, but fast walker behind us. Uh, just get over, he'll pass. He's slowing down. You know him? I'm not looking. That makes it weird. Nope. Don't know him. Great. Now he knows we're talking about him. Way to make it awkward. Hi. Hi. The man had caught up and now matched his pace to theirs. So what are you talking about as you walk along? Cleopas and Micah exchanged a surprise glance. Cleopas slowed to a stop. You're the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know? Don't you know about the things that have happened there in the last few days? 
What things? The man began to walk again, as if he expected Cleopas and Micah to join them. What do we do? Go with it. <clears throat> the things about Jesus of Nazareth, he was a prophet. He was powerful in what he said and did. But the chief priests and our rulers handed Jesus over to be sentenced to death. They nailed him to a cross. Yeah. We'd hoped he was the one who was going to set Israel free. This all happened three days ago. But early this morning, something crazy happened. Uh, some of the women who followed him went to the tomb, but they didn't find his body. They saw angels who said Jesus was alive. And then some of our friends went to the tomb. They saw it empty, too. Cleopas and Micah glanced over at the stranger to see how he would take the story. How foolish you are. Excuse me? How long it takes you to believe all that the prophets said. Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? Uh, what? Cleopas and Micah were floored. The stranger had started out by asking them questions. Now it appeared he was schooling them. The whole story is laid out already in scripture and everything written by Moses and the prophets. The stranger reminded them of scriptures they had heard since they were children. Words written thousands of years before showed how Jesus will be born how he would suffer, and how he would die. So you see, things were supposed to happen this way. This is incredible. You're saying that God has been planning this day for thousands of years? Yeah, but if that's true, then you're saying Jesus is alive? As the stranger smiled at them, Cleopas and Micah realized they had reached Emmaus. Oh, uh, this is us. The stranger nodded and kept walking. Wait, stay with us, it's, it's nearly evening. The stranger joined them at the place they were staying and sat down to dinner with them. This looks like a really fresh loaf of rye. You wanna bless the food? The man took the bread and looked up to heaven. Thank you, Father. Then he broke the bread, giving each of them a piece. It was then that God had opened their eyes. Cleopas and Micah saw clearly who this man was. Jesus? It's you! As soon as the men recognized him, Jesus disappeared from sight. That was real, right? Yeah, Jesus broke this bread. He gave it to us. I think deep down I knew it. He <sighs> explains to us what the scriptures meant. Weren't we excited as he talked with us on the road? We have to tell everyone. Right now. The men were far too excited to wait until the morning. Now, even though it was dark now, they raced the entire way back to Jerusalem. When they reached the place where the disciples were staying, the men could barely contain themselves. What's going on? Are you okay? We have seen Jesus. He's alive. Jesus' friends gathered around as Cleopas and Micah shared the whole story. They were amazed to discover how much bigger God's story was than they expected. Okay. So it doesn't matter how important you are, or how talented you are, or how much you think you know things. Things will still happen to you that you don't see coming. Like, I didn't see a room full of balloons coming today. Being humble means admitting there are things you can't do, and things you don't know. I am really good at that. That wasn't very humble. Those guys on the road with Jesus thought they knew everything God had planned. That's why when Jesus died, they were like, no way but Jesus showed them God knew what he was doing all along. For like thousands of years, God left clues that he was sending someone to save the world. Someone from Abraham's family, a king, like King David, and he would come to earth as a baby, like that prophet guy Isaiah said. There were even clues that a savior would die and come back to life. All that came true with Jesus. So when you expect things to go a certain way, even if you like 100% know things are gonna go that way, they may not. And that's okay, because nobody knows the future, except for God. Hey, maybe we can look into the Bible for clues to what God's plan is for us. Let me see if I can find my Bible. Ah, oh, no, that's not it. Okay, but there's one verse I remember. It's kind of a clue. This guy Paul wrote, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. I think that means even things that seem bad will turn out good in the end. Pretty cool, huh? So 
I don't need to know everything that's going to happen because God's in control. Here's one thing to remember today. There's always more to discover about God's plan. We're never going to know everything. That's why we've got to keep searching. I'm going to look for my Bible one more time. I want to see if there's any more clues. Not what I expected, but I think it'll do the job. You might want to close your ears for this and your eyes just to be safe. <laughs> Don't worry, Floor. I'll find you. Whoa. Hey, John, have you seen my... Wait, I'm John! John, wait. <laughs> Why are your pants on your head? Why aren't your pants on your head? Mm. My name is John. And I'm Brandon. And we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. That's right. Today we're. Wait, what? <laughs> what? what? Mm. Why are the credits. What's going on? These, these credits usually come at the end of the show. Feel like we really learned a lot today, buddy. We have? No, we just started. Why are you. Hey, what's your answer to the question of the day, Brandon? No, no, we haven't even revealed the question. That the question of the day is, what have you discovered about God that surprised Don't you? Don't give it away. No, no, what about Kellen, the Bible story, and all that stuff? Oh. <laughs> oh. Reveal the question! What is happening, John? Everything is moving backwards. The show usually happens in the other direction. I don't know that, Brandon. But I do know this. There's nothing better than a hot and fresh apple pie. <sighs> ah. Okay, I don't know how or why, but for some reason the show is upside down right now. Everything is moving backwards. See, normally we'd start the show, maybe have a guest we talk to for a while, and then someone would say, it's Bible story time with Kellen. And Uh, can one of you please explain what's happening? Is everything moving backwards for you too? Yes. Just look at the so and so show players. <laughs> you see what I mean? Oh man, it's worse than I thought. Yeah, do, do you have any advice? No. But I do have an idea. Do you think that'll work? I don't know. Let's see. It worked! Great! What's our story today, Kellen? Our story today was written down by a guy named Luke in a book we now call Luke. He wrote about two followers of Jesus who were walking on the road to a village called Emmaus. I woke up this morning and for a moment I was happy. I'd forgotten about all the things that had happened. But then I remembered. I can't believe he's gone. I, I don't even know what to do now. My whole world is turned upside down. <laughs> As they were walking, a man they didn't recognize came up and walked alongside them. What's up? Hello! 
What are you talking about as you walk along? You know, just all the stuff that's been going on in Jerusalem with Jesus. Are you the only person visiting Jerusalem who doesn't know about the things that have happened these last few days? What things? About Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet. He was powerful in everything he said and did. We really thought he would be the one to set our people free. Yeah, but then our rulers had him arrested and sentenced to die. <laughs> they nailed him to a cross. And now it's the third day since he died. But then. <clears throat> then what? We were told that our friends went to Jesus' tomb and it was empty. Somebody must have stolen the body. No. <gasps> Mary and the others said that, that there were angels. I, I know, and but... the I angels mean, said that Jesus was still alive. We really want to believe it's true, but how could it be? They walked on, still very confused and sad. They had no idea that the man walking with them was actually Jesus himself. How foolish both of you are. Excuse me? How long it takes you to believe what the prophets said? Didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? I mean, I guess. We're a little rusty on what the prophet said. Then, Jesus explained everything that was said about himself in scripture, rewinding all the way back to Moses and the prophets. It was like God had planned for this all along. Wow, it makes so much sense now. You sure know a lot about Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Do you have to keep walking? I have so much more to ask. It's getting dark. You could stay the night with us. Join us for dinner at least. Okay. Oh, All right. Super. <laughs> I make great bread. So the man they thought was a stranger, but really was Jesus, joined them for dinner. And when Jesus gave thanks and broke bread, they finally recognized him. <laughs> It's Jesus. But then Jesus disappeared from their sight. Did you? Was he? I did, and he was. Oh, I knew there was something special about him. The way he taught us about the prophets and Moses. We were so excited on the road, weren't we? We have to go back to Jerusalem and tell everyone. They'll never believe us. We have to try. When they got to Jerusalem, they told the 11 disciples what had been hard for them to believe but what they knew to be true, what God had known would happen all along, that Jesus had come back from the dead. He was alive. The end. Hey, great job, so-and-so show players. Uh, oh no, no, they're going backwards again. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Cool story, Kellen. Isn't it though? Those two on the road thought they understood what was going on. Then God goes and does something completely impossible by bringing Jesus back from the dead. I always think it's surprising how God's plan works out. I know, but God plans for things like thousands of years in advance. How could we ever understand? We probably can't, but it helps to kind of rewind and see how God has made things work out in the past. That way, even if bad things happen or things we don't understand, we can trust that someone who is bigger and smarter than we are has got things under control. I wonder if God's got one of these. Mm, probably not. Yeah, his is probably way bigger. Sure. Whoa, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh, whoa, oh boy. Now, I'll leave you to Wait, it, you bye. Wow, that someone who knows stuff was amazing. Makes me want to bake a pie. I don't even know how to deal with you right now. Thanks for having me, bye. <laughs> That is awesome. Well, hey, that's all the time we have today, Felina. Thanks for coming on the show. Well, I think the best thing to remember is that even if your pie recipe doesn't turn out the way you expect, you can still have fun baking it. Mmm, huh. that's yummy. Any advice for someone out there who might want to learn how to bake a pie? Uh, I still don't know why this is happening. Oh, you know, apple, mm. cherry, pecan, strawberry rhubarb, mm. all of the classics. But hey, I don't have to know everything, right? Huh, I'll have to try that. Hey, what are your favorite pies? Sometimes it's better to be surprised. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> oh, there's no right or wrong way to eat a pie, but I like to just pick up a nice warm pie and just 
Smash it in my face. Uh, I know we already did this, but... You know, I've always wondered, what's the best way to eat a pie? Reveal the question! <laughs> what have you discovered about God that surprised you? My name is Felina Tossi, and I make pies. Oh, well, welcome to the show! Who are you, and what do you know? It could be something that you've read about God in the Bible, or it could be something that God has done in your own life. Welcome. Good to see you. Talk about it together, and we'll see you again, hopefully right side up this time, on The So-and-So Show. And I'm John. We know who you are, John. Welcome to The So-and-So Show. And action. Mm. Guys, here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Ow. Loud. Rolling. So what are you doing after the show? I'm going to replace the batteries in this remote. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, mm. that was good. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh. What do I have to do to get some coffee around here? Hey John, are you ready to start the show? Now I'm confused. 